Hi, my name is Dave. On behalf of Joel Hollingsworth and myself, this is the video on setting Eclipse preferences so that we can comply or help us comply with the Oracle Sun coding conventions. And the great thing is, once we set the preferences in Eclipse, they're set to the current workspace in effect. We can also save those preferences and import those into additional workspaces or new workspaces when we create those so that our code will always look the same. If other people use similar preference files, all of our code will look like it was developed by a single person. So I'm going to walk through live setting the Eclipse preferences. I'll go through kind of quickly so I can get this video done in hopefully 15 minutes. I'm going to be using Eclipse Indigo 3.7. You can download this version from eclipse.org slash downloads. And today I'm using Eclipse ID for Java EE developers, but you can also use Eclipse ID for Java developers and it won't make any difference for this video. At Elon we use Eclipse for classes like Java 2, all the way up to advanced classes on JSF and Enterprise Java being programming. That's why I'm using the EE developer version. Now when you use the IDE with Eclipse, you need to download and reference the latest Java. So we're using Java 7, but no, we're using the JDK and not the JRE. This is important. You need to use the JDK so that you have Java doc and some additional functionality that is not included in the JRE. You can download the JDK free from Oracle at this URL. Now though, we, though I'm using Eclipse 3.7, these coding conventions haven't changed much. And if you've got Eclipse 3.6, 3.5, or I suspect if you have Eclipse 3.8 coming out uh, June 2012, or Eclipse 3.9 3 coming out in June 2013, it will still work and still look the same. Okay, so let's bring up Eclipse. I have a shortcut here that will bring up Eclipse Indigo for me. Now when you bring up Eclipse, it's going to say what workspace do you want to save all of your work into. This is just a folder and you can control where it goes. To show you that I can control it, I decided I want to put my workspace on my C drive in a folder called CSC230. When I click OK, Eclipse will go out and create this workspace and make it my current workspace. If the folder already existed, it would have just brought up the workspace on that folder. Now when you bring up Eclipse, it may look like this, or it may look like the full welcome screen. That's fine. If you have the full welcome screen, you can either kill it here, or you can click on Workbench. Since I'm running the Java EE version, it, it decided that I probably wanted to come up in the Java EE perspective. We're, not, we're going to use a different perspective, namely the Java perspective. I'm going to click on this little perspective button and select Java. Also, perspective does is it sets up selective menus, shortcuts, and different layout of views. I don't like task lists. I don't like outlines, so I got rid of those, but we could bring those back at any time. So the goal today was to get right into preferences. So under window, I select preferences. And you can see that I have a whole long list of preferences that I can set. I want to start with general, open that up, open up editors, and go to text editors. And I want to insert spaces for tabs. I want to want a print margin shown in my editor so I can see when I violate 80 characters per line. And I'm also going to want line numbers in my editor. So if I get a bug in, on a certain line, I can easily go look to my editor to see what that bug is. I'll click apply. I want to come down now to workspace. And on the workspace, I want to want to use UTF encoding. This is the typical coding and character set that's popular today. And as you move into more advanced Java and generation of HTML, JSF pages, this will be a nice setting to have already in place. I'm going to apply it. 
come back up here and close my general, and then I'm going to come down to Java. Now under Java, I want to open up Appearance. I'm going to click the Member Sort Order. And this is going to control that within a class, does it show data members, then constructors, and then methods. And within each category, what should the order be in terms of visibility? Public, protected, package, and private. So to set that up, this is pretty close except for static methods. So I'll move that down. I want to sort members within each category. I want them to be public, protected, default, and then private. So I'll move this down and I'll apply it. I'll close the parents, come to build path. This is an important setting in terms of conventions both in this course and subsequent Java courses. It seems that the convention used throughout the field is to have source as your folder for source code, SRC, and have classes as your folder under which all of your bytecode gets stored. I'm going to apply that change. Next we're going to come down to code style. And under code style, the first thing I'm going to click is parameters. I'm going to click edit, and I'm going to want a prefix of the letter A put in front of automatically generated names for my setters when they get created. Next I'm going to click on code templates. I'm going to go here to comments and select files. And what this is saying, whenever a new file, a new Java file gets created, on top of that file, if I ask for comments, it's going to put whatever's shown down here. And I want to control this to put up my copyright notice. So I have files, I click edit, and it's going to allow me to put in what I want to go at the top of each file. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So first thing I want to do is put in the file name. So I click insert variable and it will automatically put the file name in where this variable is being shown. I want version 1.0 to come up and then I want the date inserted. The date is also another variable that can be automatically filled in by the system. I then want to put up a copyright notice say 2012 for David J. Powell. Of course, you would not put in David J. Powell. You would put in your own name in your own company. I'm with Elon University in Elon. We're down in North Carolina, 27244. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll see the pattern shown up here that's going to be displayed. I could set other patterns, and we will eventually in subsequent videos when we start to get into Javadoc. I want to click Apply. Next is Formatter. Formatter uh, has a lot of options that we can set. So we're going to say that we want to start with the Java conventions, and then we want to create our own particular format or changes to the standard Java conventions. So I click Edit, and at the top, I want to give it a name. And the name I'm going to give it is Elon University. You can use whatever name that you like. And I have a bunch of tabs containing a lot of parameters that I can set. I want to set the tab policy to be all spaces. And that's all I need to set on this page. On the next, let's see, blank lines. I want to go to blank lines, and I want... Two lines after a package declaration. I want two blank lines after an import declaration. And I want two blank lines between classes. Everything else is right. I'm going to go to line wrapping. I want it to wrap after it gets to column 75. I realize I can go 80 wide. I decided to give myself a little extra room before the 80. And I can set wrapping policies for a variety of different things here. But for now, I'm just going to take what they've, what they've given me. And I'm, and I'm happy with these coding conventions. I want to click Apply. I'm going to click OK. That completes code style. Now I'm going to come down to Compiler. 
I want to make sure that my Java 7 is being shown. So yes, compiler 1 7 is in effect. I don't, do not want to have an earlier version in play. I'm going to come down to debug and open that up and go to step filtering. We do want to use step filters and we want to filter out everybody else's code. We only want to debug our code this semester. We'll assume that the code and libraries given to us by Sun has been already properly, properly done. So I'll apply that. I'll close debug. Come down to editor. And under editor, I'm going to say is always put the light bulb up to help me give me some options to select from whenever, whenever I make a mistake. I'll apply that. Then I'm going to come down to save actions. Now, whenever I click save, what do I want to happen? So I click perform the following actions on save. Yes, I do want you to format source code. I do want you to organize inputs. And I want you to take some additional actions. I'll click configure. I do want to remove trailing white space. Let's correct my indentation. Yes, I do want you to sort my members. Under code style, I do always want you to use compound statements for if, whiles, fors, and dos with braces. But I don't want you to put this final modifier that you see here in front of variables. That adds confusion more than help. So I'll click OK. I'm satisfied with this setup. I'll click Apply. Close my editor. I want to come down to install JREs. I want to verify that a JDK is installed, not a JRE. And it has the path where the JDK lives. On my system, it's under the C folder, under the Glassfish folder. So here's my folder. Here's Glassfish. And you can see JDK is located under the Glassfish. You would have to put the path name of where yours is located. That's simple. You just click Add and select it. So that completes all the settings that we want to set up. We now want to save these so that we can bring them back in the future. Not have to type them in each time. So I'll say OK. I'll come out here to File, Export, General. I want to click Preferences. Next. What's the preference file? So I want to go out to my desktop and I'm just going to call it Elon University Preferences. Long name. And it should add an EPF to it. Click Save. Yes, that's the file that I want. Click Finish. And the file gets exported. So now in the future, whenever I create a new workspace, those preferences will automatically be in effect. So let me close out this workspace. Exit. Let's bring up Indigo again. But instead of going to CSC 230 this time, let's go to CSC 230 uh, and 330 also. I'm going to create a new workspace. Okay, I'll get rid of the welcome, create my Java perspective, kill a few windows. Now this workspace is not going to know anything about the preferences that we just set for the other workspace. For example, under general, if we look at workspace, we see it has a different encoding. So I want to go to file, import, under general, pick preferences, Let's go out to our desktop. We pick the preference file, open, finish. It's now loaded in our preferences to this new workspace. If I go to Window, Preferences, we'll see that our workspace is set to UTF-8 along with all of our other preferences. Once again, once you set preferences for a workspace, you don't have to set those again. Okay, so wrapping up, now set Eclipse preferences. You can save these Eclipse, Eclipse preferences with other people. If you're all using the same preference file, all of our code should look the same, making us all, all the more productive. Have a great day.